making a Stuart model steam plant, part 25. Fitting Stevenson link, reversing valve gear, taking a look at the components and commencing the assembly job. This is not strictly true. Before commencing the assembly job, I need to know what I'm actually going to be assembling. And there are such a lot of parts in this kit. Plus, I don't have any instructions about how to assemble it all. When I was in my teens, I scored 138 on an IQ test, but I must admit I've definitely got dimmer since those days. These are two parts that I'm not going to use because the engine is already fitted with a pair. They are the valve forks. This shows how not to assemble a set of reversing valve gear for a model steam engine. I've only fitted these together to make sure that the threads all match, and I soon found out that the studs and all of the fixings are threaded 7BA. There are also plenty of these thin nuts that are used to hold the parts in place, and possibly to be used as locking nuts as well. One of the thin nuts needs to be fitted where the stud meets the eccentric strap. There is of course one minor complication. One of the eccentric straps at each side is offset, and needs to be fitted with one of these studs that you can see in this clip that is bent. If you look in the top left hand side of this image, you will see the layout. On each end of the crankshaft, there are two eccentrics, and these drive the expansion link. It will all start to make sense in the next episode. This clip shows the locking nut in position, ready to be tightened, and here, using a small spanner, I'm tightening it up to hold everything in place. Needless to say, do not over tighten any of the parts, they're very small and they will break. This clip shows the eccentric straps hung on the end of the crankshaft, but please note, in this clip, on purpose, I've positioned the eccentrics on the crankshaft the wrong way round. It is very important to make sure that the straight shaft to the expansion link is the innermost at both sides. I absolutely flatly refuse to fit the 5BA slot head grub screw to this part. This is one of the eccentric sheaves. I haven't got any 5BA Allen head grub screws, so I'm re-threading the part 6BA. And please note, these eccentric sheaves are made from steel, and they're a lot tougher to thread than the normal cast iron ones. Just be very careful, take it easy when threading these steel eccentric sheaves, because it will be possible to break the tap, and you don't want to do that. I'm sorry about the state of this clip, the camera decided to focus on the needle file. There's a really bad burr on all of these eccentric sheaves. This is where the parts have been parted off from the bar stock. I think this must be an oversight because it is supposed to be a kit of machine parts, not a kit of part machine parts. And for anyone assembling this reversing gear set, you're going to have to improvise if you don't have a lathe. You must never do this because you're going to injure yourself. Always make sure that the part you're working on is supported properly. Here I'm using a vise with brass jaws to prevent damaging the part. I started off using a needle file but then I realised that my lifespan was probably not going to be long enough to complete it and that's why I showed the drill method for anyone who doesn't have a lathe. I have three lathes and my small Myford ML7R is perfect for this job. I'm not drilling all the way through, just removing the burr. And here I'm re-threading the other eccentric sheave. And just like the other one, I'm re-threading the sheave 6BA to take an Allen type grub screw. When using small taps in small pieces of work, I do find it useful to hold them in my hands. But this steel is tough and it was starting to hurt my fingers, so I used the cloth to make it less painful. Here is my box of very small 6BA grub screws. I selected a couple of these and fitted them in position. Both of these eccentric sheaves are pegged together into one unit. And when each of the pairs of eccentric sheaves are pushed together, you will end up with the eccentrics 180 degrees apart. If you put them together the wrong way, and both of the sheaves are in the same position, then when you've assembled the valve gear, your engine will not run in reverse. I tap the steel pin into position using a piece of brass bar. This clip and its soundtrack is running at half normal speed. Here are the eccentric sheaves joined together. On many steam engines using Stevenson's link valve gear with pinned together eccentric sheaves, there is some sort of offset. It's only a few degrees, but I can't tell by looking at them, and I don't have any instructions. Both pairs of eccentric sheaves need to be a nice sliding fit on the crankshaft. 
The crankshaft diameter is 930 seconds of an inch, so I thought it would be a good idea to try a test fit using a 930 seconds of an inch twist drill. And this is when I ran into quite a serious problem. Here's my box of reamers, and I need to find a 930 seconds of an inch diameter reamer. Here it is fitted into my twist drill. Once again, I'm assuming that some people do not have lathes. Let me show you the problem. Do not under any circumstances do this, it's just to show you the problem. The eccentric sheaves as they came out of the kit, apart from they had really large burrs on them, are too tight to fit onto the crankshaft. Here I'm tapping them into position with the video running at half speed using a piece of copper tubing. Once again, don't even think about trying this, it's just for the video. To remove them I had to use a screwdriver as a lever. They were too tight to rotate on the crankshaft by hand. So in turn I fitted the eccentric sheaves into the chuck and I'm using a reamer going in and out at quite a high speed which should give me less than an interference fit. After reaming the hole in the centre of the first pair I did exactly the same in the second pair as shown here. Even after all this they were still tight on the crankshaft. Now it's top tip time and I give 100% of the credit for this tip to Mr LBSC who used to write for the Model Engineer magazine many years ago. This is an old reamer and it's quite blunt, so what I'm doing is using a carbide tip tool to scrape along the flutes, obviously in the cutting direction, and what's happening here is it's raising a burr on the edge of the reamer, and this will last just long enough to make the hole that you're reaming just very very slightly oversize. I thank LBSC for this tip because I've used it so many times over the years. Now it's time to feed the reamer into both of the eccentrics as pairs. After doing this I should be able to fit these eccentric sheaves to the crankshaft without them being over tight. But please be aware this is only a tiny amount of oversize. The eccentrics are still a firm fit on the crankshaft but now they are serviceable. I did have to slightly clean up the crankshaft at the flywheel side because it was marked. I gently tightened the allen head grub screws and here you see the eccentric sheaves fixed to the crankshaft at both ends. To say this is a machine kit I'm a little disappointed that I had to do something like this, but anyway it's working now. That's it for this episode, stay healthy, thanks for watching and may your eccentrics always fit. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.